fishing, you have to appreciate, is the last great organized hunting activity on Earth. We don't hunt for meat in general anymore. Sure, there's lots of hunting that goes on, but the main supply of meat to people in the United States and elsewhere in the world comes from agriculture, from livestock. Yellowfin is a very important pelagic fish species here in Hawaii. Yellowfin tuna um, outside of Kona is probably the premier fish that most people pursue, uh, especially during the summertime when we have the larger classes of yellowfin tuna. Yellowfin has always been important to not just the canneries that we used to have here, but it's very important to the recreational fishermen and our, our subsistence fishery as well. People used to have this mentality in the world that with tuna, well, why should I conserve this tuna? Because tomorrow it's going to cross the ocean. But if you believe and know that your fish don't leave you, well, that's, that's a whole different concept. We're full-time commercial fishermen. We make 100% of our livelihood from fishing, um, whether it be pelagic fishing or bottom fishing. I fish pretty much exclusively for Mama's Fish House on Maui. Um, we do have three other wholesalers on the island, which takes a large chunk of the yellowfin and big eye that comes from our console fads that we have. When it's on, it's on, it's, and when it's off, it's off. It's like a light switch, you know? If one day you be there, it'll be biting. The next day you go, you won't catch anything. It's that, it, it, it's that, it's that, it's just a water temperature thing or a current thing or, you know, just the food might have left and then they're done, you know, they're, they're not there. And then you wait a day or two and then they'll come back, you know, it's because they're migrating everywhere, they're following the food. I was conducting research for the Pelagic Fisheries Research Program. And up here in Hawaii we had tuna, but I was just curious, wh where do our tuna come from? We assume that they probably come from the equator and some are born locally and we have a good influx of fish coming in, etc. And that, uh, but that's all assumption. These animals are really amazing. They're so fast growing and they mature very, very quickly. A mature yellowfin tuna, the females will put out between like three and eight million eggs per night night after night after night, repeatedly, for weeks and at a time. And, um, th and they'll be doing that after they're only about two and a half years old. In Hawaii, it's kind of an interesting situation because every summer, we get these runs. And, and those are spawning aggregations of, you know, the big yellowfin. And, and you see all of the guys going out there and catching them. And, and those fish spawn, drop their eggs, and, and, you know, the eggs are caught in the local currents and, and drift around for a while. So they're fast growing, they reproduce a lot. We have a good spawning season of them here. But one of the questions that we always ask in tuna science is, how is our population of tuna that we have here connected to the broader Pacific, to the Eastern Pacific, the uh, equatorial regions? That is, how much can we depend on the population to be repopulated from that sink population, or how independent is it? And none of that was really known at that time. Our next big project I got involved in was with uh, Dr. Kim Holland, the Hawaii Tuna Tagging Project. We tagged 8,000 yellowfin tuna, then you just let the experiment run and see where they get caught. What was intriguing was that out of all those thousands of yellowfin tuna, most of them tagged within the main Hawaiian Islands, basically from Kauai to the Big Island and neighboring seamount to the south of us. Of all those thousands of yellowfin tuna, throughout the whole span of the project and throughout their lifespan, they were only caught in Hawaiian waters. So the histology of the fish um, through the, you know, studying the otolith, there's some chemical markers in there that says this fish was born in these waters and, and when we catch them and we give those otoliths to the science center and they look and says, oh yeah, this is a local fish. Studies we've done with that large tagging project were able to develop um, size-specific natural mortality estimates for yellowfin tuna. And surprisingly, the natural mortality levels dropped very low to their minimum at about 10 pounds. So after 10 pounds or so, 
what that tells you is that that fish has a very good chance of surviving in the wild. The tuna is mature over kind of a size range, so there's not just this point where they all start spawning. For yellowfin tuna in Hawaii, the size ranges from about 35 to 100 pounds. We use a length-based figure, so generally most of the fish mature at about 112 centimeters, about 44 inches, when we estimate that half the population is, is spawning. And that occurs uh, somewhere between two and two and a half years of age, so it's quite, quite young. About 10 years ago, there was an initiative in the legislature to take a look at placing some minimum sizes on both yellowfin tuna and aku or skipjack tuna. So I believe what happened in, in sort of a compromise, which usually occurs in the legislative process, um, yellowfin tuna was assigned a three pound minimum and aku uh, was not assigned any minimum right now. So for home consumption, it's important to know, you can consume an aku of any size, you can consume a yellowfin tuna of any size. You just can't sell a yellowfin tuna that is less than three pounds. There were no studies done at that time. There was no scientific evidence. There was no justification or uh, real reason to, to regulate at three pounds. It has nothing to do with the size of maturity or the size of anything, really. It was a holdover of the, someone's desire to initially regulate skipjack. There's been some discussion about old laws if they're not appropriate, get rid of them, revise them. It's been a, um, a long-standing debate within the state what to do with this law. What David's work has shown is that with a relatively modest increase in minimum size would put the fish at a period in its life history where its natural mortality rate is at its lowest. And so if fish landed above that minimum size, one would expect more of the specimens to reach Maturity. If we say had a, a larger minimum size, the trade-off would be some people would be disadvantaged from being able to land small yellowfin. How big is that community? Even if it's small, what aspects of that community make it vulnerable? Maybe it's like 10% of the population, but it might also be that it's 90% uh, of all the poor people or below a certain income level. So you know, it, you you have to be able to describe those impacts. Similarly, the most recent assessments for yellowfin indicate that it is not being overfished and is not in an overfished state, but it's probably pretty close to the level of population size that can produce the maximum sustainable yield. And so there is concern about it not being overfished in the future, and there are close attention being paid to it and its stock assessment to try and make sure that we stay on the good side of the thresholds of overfishing and overfished. The three pound size, three, four, five pounders are a lot easier to sell than the five, six, seven, eight pounders. Um, just because it's, it's a more usable size for, for any family. It, it will affect how much we can sell, but you know, I think we have to look at the resource. We have to make sure that we have enough for future generations. And uh, you know, I think we can try a larger minimum size. The smaller tuna, if allowed to grow to a larger size, when they get to about that 12 to 16 pound range, if they're allowed to survive in greater numbers, grow much quicker at that point. So the benefit to the fishermen by leaving those smaller tunas out there, rather than catching them or selling them, is that you will have, theoretically, a larger number of fish after a certain period of time in the larger class range, which is the more desirable class range for sale for poke markets and sushi markets. If we can convince fishermen that it's in their best interest to not catch large numbers of small yellowfin tuna in Hawaii, which the science shows are born and sort of stay around the waters of Hawaii, so it's a stock that we really should manage because we're responsible for our own and our children's futures when it comes to yellowfin tuna. If we observe a little bit of more restraint, um, the fishery will improve in the long run. We should protect our resources for our people. We should make sure that they are sustainable, but we, we want to look ahead, you know, preparing for the future. Mm -hmm.